So guys, Jake with TN Tactical coming to you with another special video. Today we are looking at the Meprolite M21, a specially unique object that was originally designed for the Israeli Defense Force by Meprolite. Today we're going to go over all the specs and features of this particular optic, why I chose to get this one, and why you too may also want to get one of these. Uh, or maybe you won't want to get one. I don't know. There's definitely some pros and cons to it. But again, I'm going to tell you why I got this one. Maybe it'll help inform you and help you decide if you want to get one as well. So the Meprolite M21, this is not something newly created. This is actually one of the older designs of reflex optics you can currently get on the market that are still being produced to this day. It uses a combination of fiber optic. This all this white stuff here that you see on the sides and the front. And it also uses tritium built into the actual optic. Comes with a variety of different radicals. This one has the triangle radical, which I really like because you can use a little tip, just a tip to actually get a good zero. And then you can actually use the rest of the triangle body length to actually zero out to further distances. I think I think actually Meprolite gives you a little thing in the instruction manual to tell you about how far you can measure that out. But uh, I, I mean, I live in Tennessee, there's plenty of hills. I'm not gonna really be shooting too far but it's there if you need it, just do your research. I picked this up off of Optics Plant for about 370-ish dollars. Uh, I know they can go as low as 300 and sometimes as high as $500, which you should not buy this for $500. If you do that, you're crazy. But I got it really because this is an optic that has been around for a long time. It's been battle tested forever. I mean, literally it's being used over in Israel. For me personally, it was just more of a fulfillment of something I've always wanted to have that just always seemed to be kind of out of reach as far as practicality goes. When I first got into firearms, I remember going into the gun store and getting my first handgun ever, uh, Glock 23, by the way, 40 cal back when I didn't know better. I remember seeing this optic sitting on some kind of rifle or AK or something. It's probably a bullpup, let's be honest. I saw this, I looked through it, and I was like, wow, this thing is like so cool, you know, like most people usually do. You look through it, you see like sort of like a blue tint that seems pretty tactical, and you see that little triangle that also seems to be pretty awesome too. I saw this as a new shooter who was just getting the firearms, and I thought to myself, man, this thing is so freaking cool. It, it's built rugged and tough. I really want to get one of these, but God, it was like $400. I was like, I can't afford this. What am I thinking spending $400 on an optic, right? Who could possibly imagine spending $400 on a particular optic that's essentially just a red dot with older technology? Who would do that? Here I am now, 10 years later or more, and... Uh, it's like nothing. But anyways, so I think part of it for me was because I first saw the optic when I was a young fledgling in the gun industry. I thought to myself, man, one day, one day I'm going to get that. Not really knowing much else about it. I was like, I'm going to get that one day. I don't give a damn. It just seems cool. And here we are. So let's go over some specs and features. So this does come with a variety of different radical options. Like I said, I got the triangle one, but they have different ones. They have just like the dot, they've got like the circle and then the dot in the middle. They've got like, a, I think like an X pattern with something in the middle, it's kind of weird. A few different designs, but like I said, I went with the triangle because number one, it was the first one I ever saw, but number two, after thinking practicality, it seemed like the best one to choose from to get a good zero on that point, just a tip, and then use the rest of the body to get further zero the further distances you are. It comes with a very rugged body, very durable, very uh, indestructible, I would say. Basically, you can drop this thing in any different angle you want on the ground. And I mean, unless you're purposely trying to bust the glass out, it's going to keep it safe. I mean, this is actually enclosed. You can see there, it's really like enclosed deep up in there. There is some uh, threading there, which we'll talk about in just a second. That, and then you've got in here. There's your bluish tint there. There's my eyeball. So because it's so recessed deep up in there, you're really gonna have a hard time being able to bust this glass out unless you're just intentionally doing it. it comes with these QD mounts here, very nice. I know a lot of the other big companies, they don't give you that. They actually give you a mounting option that's practical too, right out of the box. Now, as I previously stated, this uses fiber optic and trim. There is no electronics on here. I think that's pretty cool because if you're ever in a serious situation where let's say the EMP goes off and fries all electronics, this baby will still work in theory. It should because of no electronics being used. Now that being said, let's address the elephant in the room. Um, a lot of time you have the issue of getting washout. Washout is the term where 
if you're in a shaded area, much like I am right now, and you look out into uh, the brighter areas, it becomes very difficult to actually see your reticle. So washout is very common. It's very easy. Sure oh my God, shut the f up. Having that washout effect is a very common problem that a lot of people say they have an issue with when using this optic. I have an issue with it as well, but there are solutions to that, which we'll get to in just a second. Part of the reason why they've got that blue tint in there is to kind of help assist with the washout issue. Other than that though, I mean, as far as holding zero goes and being durable and rugged, it definitely passes with that. The tritium inside this will usually last roughly about 10 years, eight years, give or take. And the thing that does kind of suck about it is there's no like end user maintenance. So you can't like replace a tritium. You can't call them and order another thing of tritium or something. You just have to basically buy a whole nother optic. That kind of sucks. It really sucks. Again, you kind of know that going into it, that this is something you have to think about. Is this something that's gonna be sitting in a safe for eight to 10 years or longer? If so, it may be a big con to owning something without replacement of tritium as an option. Regarding the tritium, regarding the washout, there are a couple of solutions that I have found online that I've actually partaken in that I wanna share with you. You may notice that there is something a little bit different about this particular version. That is this knob here. There is a tiny little LED inside of here that comes out right there. Now this is actually made by uh, Mako Group. It's a sister company of Meprolite. Essentially you crank this dial up here. It's gonna actually increase the brightness with that LED that's built into it. And that will allow your reticle to get brighter and darker depending on the conditions. Now. The trade-off there is it's slightly bulkier and you're having to still rely on electronics, but it is a good solution there for those that maybe want to have the reticle stay bright when they're shooting in shaded areas into bright spots so there's no washout. Here, even outside, you can see it's kind of blowing out the fiber optic to where it's really bright and this becomes even more noticeable in darker conditions than just being outside in broad daylight like I am right now. Off. And then you've got level one, level two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. At this point, the uh, fiber optic is completely glowing all the way around. Definitely not tactical. Definitely going to give yourself away. So again, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one zero even at one the lowest brightness saying if you're in really dark conditions this still stands out quite a bit where that led light just floods through the fiber optic so definitely not tactical now online there's a lot of people saying that one thing you can do is just take kind of like a black electrical tape and cover up all the areas of the fiber optic that glow. That to me is kind of silly to do though because that's the whole point of having the fiber optic so that they can collect sunlight. It's not the fiber optics fault that you have to stick this thing on. A more practical solution may be to get a polarizer. I actually got this on Amazon, uh, super cheap, maybe like 20 bucks if that. Basically you take this and you remember that thread pattern I told you about at the front there? What that does is it causes your optic to darken so that you can see that red coal a little bit easier. So if you look here, super dark, but you can see that reticle and then you can crank it back up. So as you twist counterclockwise, it goes from visible to solid pitch black. When you're using a red dot or any kind of reflex optic or anything, you're supposed to basically shoot with both eyes open anyway. So you're essentially cutting your dominant eye with that optic. You can see the green and then that allows you to aim with your passive eye. You can see everything else. So I can have the polarizer all the way to the max to where everything else but the reticle is black completely. I can't see through it. But with both eyes open, I can simply use my passive eye to sort of overlap whatever I'm trying to shoot shoot at and it looks just like as if you're looking through a clear reticle of course it is progressive so you can adjust how much you actually want to polarize it now with that polarizer it's not going to be using any electronic still so you could go without this led and just use a polarizer it does still darken the overall blue tint just a little bit even on its brightest mode brightest being you know, the least polarized. So there is a little bit of give there. It's not too noticeable. It's not gonna really make a difference unless you actually take the thing off and compare it, but it's just something to take note of. 
Another major issue I saw with this particular optic comes from more of the military side, not so much the civilian side, is the glare. So there is a simple solution for that. It's this little circular ring and it's not great as far as how it looks. It is useful, like you can actually look through it and make out everything with fine detail. Um, I'm personally not really a fan of it though because it does kind of look like you're looking through a screen door, but it does block the, uh, the glare, the glint, if you will, that you could potentially have. It comes out about that far. You can take the polarizer, anti-glare component, and put that on top of there as well. And then you've got everything. You've got the, the anti-glare piece up front, the polarizer right behind it that you can use. And if you really wanted to go crazy, you could put the LED thing here so that way you're not having to worry about washout as well. Lots of different options to choose from to sort of configure it how you will. I've got all the things because I'm T and tactical and I like to spend my money uselessly. Of course, you've got your adjustments for windage here, elevation back up here. But other than that, it's very simple, very rugged, very durable. I really, really like it. This wasn't sponsored in any way. I just really, really wanted to get one of these for the longest time. And I finally have. It's kind of like one of those life choices that you make that maybe not many other people understand. This is that life choice for me. This is something that I've always wanted and I finally got it. Now, that recommends for self-defense? Probably not especially when you're dealing with the emitter glowing like that. It's not really a good choice to be tactical. You don't really want to deal with a polarizer and trying to adjust it in the middle of a firefight inside your house. Uh, it's not really a good choice when there's other more practical options like, you know, EOTechs or Holosuns or really just any regular LED emitter. As far as outdoor use goes, I think you'll find a lot more enjoyment out of it. You still have to deal with a little bit of that washout when you're shooting from a shaded area into bright open areas. Other than that, I think it would be a pretty good choice to use if you're, say, hunting or doing some tactical shit outside. It's rugged, it's durable, and it's probably one of the most unique and cool reflex optics out there. So again, self-defense, probably not for range fun or other tactical shit. Yes, absolutely. The bottom line is I really like it and that's really at the end of the day all that really matters. As long as you like it, that's all that you should care about. Guys, that's going to wrap it up today. Remember, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Have you picked up and tried a Meprolite M21? I'd love to hear from you. We will see you next time. This particular baby and tell you why. Hang on. Hey, what's up? Are you ready? Okay, I'm finishing filming the review. Give me like 10 minutes. I'll be in there, okay? All right, bye-bye.